Welcome to the European Parliamentary Research Service Podcasts. Today we'll be talking about the European Commission's plans to cut harmful alcoholic consumption as part of its cancer prevention plan by giving consumers more information about what they're drinking and its effects. Keep listening. Did you know that Europeans are the world's heaviest drinkers? Yep, you heard well. According to the World Health Organization, people in European countries tend to consume more alcohol compared to other regions in the world. And alcohol kills. Almost one third of alcohol attributable deaths in Europe are due to cancer, followed by liver psoriasis, cardiovascular diseases and injuries. We've spoken to Richard Price, EU Affairs Policy Manager at the European Cancer Organization. Alcohol consumption is a key factor in developing over 60 diseases and conditions, including seven types of cancer, mouth, upper throat, larynx, esophagus, breast, liver and colorectal cancer. So if we're serious about trying to reduce cancer incidence, we have to improve consumer awareness about the alcohol cancer link. That's where alcohol labelling and health warnings come in. So what can Europe do to help Europeans drink less and thus reduce health risks? Margarita Schinas, Vice President of the European Commission, explains the Commission's objective. The harmful consumption of alcohol, we want to bring it down to 10% by 2025. The question is how? By reviewing taxation laws, limiting online advertising and promotion before the end of 2022, the Commission will propose labelling alcoholic beverages with mandatory indications of their ingredients and nutritional contents, with health warnings on labels following by 2023. Let's hear the European Commissioner for Health, Stella Kiriakidis. We are proposing mandatory labelling of ingredients and nutrient content and health warnings on alcoholic beverages. These measures are part of the EU's Beating Cancer Plan, presented in February 2021. But it's not the first time the EU attempts to label ingredients and nutritional values on alcoholic drinks. No, it's not. The first attempts were made in the late 1970s, but member states in the Council couldn't agree on any of the proposals. As a result, alcoholic drinks containing more than 1.2% by volume of alcohol are exempted from the obligation to list their ingredients and provide nutritional information. But European citizens demanded more information. As suggested by a study on consumer knowledge, after being informed about the energy content of alcoholic drinks such as beer, wine and spirits, almost half of the participants wanted information on the energy value of alcohol beverages to be provided in future. And the truth is, there's no reason why it shouldn't. No, there isn't. That's why in 2018, and at the Commission's insistence, the alcoholic drinks industry came up with its own self-regulation, suggesting that some sectors would list all ingredients on labels, while others would only need to provide information online. Following this self-regulatory proposal, and after a 14-month dialogue with the Commission, a Memorandum of Understanding was signed in 2019, according to which spirits producers will voluntarily start rolling out energy information on labels, combined with comprehensive ingredients and nutritional information online. So, what are the views of stakeholders? Well, as the Director General from the European Consumer Organization said, it is totally unrealistic to expect consumers to take a few minutes to check online how calorific wine or vodka is when you have your hands full trying to keep both your trolley and your kids under control while doing your shopping. So they need information on the bottle, not screen swipes away. But on the industry side, there are concerns. While the spirits sector generally welcomes the objectives of Europe's beating cancer plan and supports measures to cut harmful alcohol consumption, there are worries that moderate drinking will also be stigmatised. We spoke to Ulrich Adam, Director General of Spirits Europe, and this is what he told us. The best evidence shows that light to moderate consumption of alcohol can be part of a balanced lifestyle. It is therefore harmful patterns of drinking which we must further target. We welcome the fact that the Beating Cancer Plan wants to contribute to exactly that goal. Doing so effectively will ensure that the positive trends of declining harmful consumption in Europe will continue and accelerate in the years ahead. 
What's clear is that bringing alcohol requirements in line with non-alcoholic beverages would allow consumers to make truly informed choices. So it's a goal worth fighting for. This is a European Parliamentary Research Service podcast. Thanks for listening.